Hey class, it's Bill Barry with week's, week two's demo video. This week covers some really neat material. It's useful stuff and it starts edging us into the object world in an uh, interesting way. So we have a lot to cover. So we're going to do a demo this week and the demo is uh, drawing a rectangle. This is going to uh, the little program on the right that the output you see there is what we're aiming for. Basically we want to ask the user for their name and we want to at some point handle the case where they type more than we expect them because that turns out to be interesting. We're going to ask the user for the rectangle dimensions that they want and no more than a hundred. We're not going to confine them, we'll leave that for another day, but you can, you'll can you know how to do that anyway. Uh, we also want to make sure the background is white for the drawing area, as you see on the right. We want to then draw on this little area a text-based salutation, so you notice regardless of how I entered my name, I want to put it in uppercase, like Hello Bill, and then I want to specify a certain kind of font and a type and a size. Then I want to draw a blue filled rectangle at the point that, uh, you know, with the sizes that the user gave us, so width and height. Then uh, we want to see the example here on the bottom right. If the user says 45 by 90, they get 45 wide, 90 tall, and that's going to be our program. So it's not a lot of code, but it's a lot of concepts. So we'll cover that, and then that's our deal for this week. So let me get a starter project going, and then we'll continue. So you'll see I've created a project on my desktop and for now I'm calling it user box. It's not really exciting in terms of uh, how the project is set up, but you'll see that I have created a very standard uh, let's see here, a very standard program. Here we go. Let's put it in the corner. Um, notice also uh, I've got my standard introduction. We're going to learn later why it's really good to follow this stuff that it's uh, suggesting here that Java provides as templates. Um, so don't be surprised that we'll, we'll come to that and it's going to be important, including the stuff that I have deleted here under the provided class. The sample methods have little headers that turn out to be important, but I'm deleting those for now and for the moment I'm also deleting this because I have so little space and I want to be able to see the top of my program. So uh, there we go, a very stu standard little program that compiles. Now, what do we want to do here? Well, the first thing, let's let's write some pseudocode so we kind of know where we're going with all of this. I would say the first thing is I want to uh, get the username and I want to get the box dimensions. And let's see, what else do I need to do in this program? Well, uh, to do a drawing, you're going to want to use for now the drawing panel class that is provided. It makes life a lot easier. So we're going to definitely want to set up our drawing panel and then we're going to draw the salutation and the box. Now these aren't worth their own functions but they're, they're uh, good little headers for us and they will kind of help us organize the program. So let's get started jumping in with what we need to do to get the username. This is our first introduction to how we do input like this. <clears throat> Turns out that uh, Java makes it easy for you to deal with input <clears throat> using a thing called a scanner. And a scanner, notice I said input, but it doesn't mean that is that it is user input from the keyboard. It can be input of all kinds of types, so you can do input from strings, input from files, all kinds of interesting things are going to be uh, are going to be possible using this scanner object. So we're going to use a scanner this time to make this thing work. So this is how it works when you need to use the scanner object. The first thing you need to do is you need to use you need to bring in the stuff. A scanner is not one of the built-in classes, so we need to bring this thing in <clears throat> so that we can actually use it. So when you bring in library stuff, this is the way you do it. You say import and then you put the following. Right? You say from the Java utility scanner, right? So you're going to import that code so that it will make sense to Java when you go to compile this thing, it's going to succeed. Otherwise it's going to say, never heard of this thing, and you'll you'll know that you've forgotten some sort of import. So we need to do that to get it rolling. And then we need to actually set up the scanner for use because it is multi-purpose. So we do want to set this up and tell it, hey scanner guy, we want you to <clears throat> be looking Looking at the input for us from the console, the, from you know, from the user from the console. So this is how you do it, <clears throat> and this is the standard way to set up objects. 
So first, you're going to declare a variable of the type. Well, what type is the variable? The variable is of type scanner. It is an instance of the scanner class. I'm going to call it console in. Right? Now, that sets it up. It's important for us to start realizing we have used so far all of the primitive elemental types. We've been using these in Java, like integers and doubles, floats, whatever, and uh, strings are kind of on the edge. We'll learn more about that later. But in, in essence, um, we are now starting to use objects, and objects work differently. If you think of memory being a little box and you have an integer, you think of that little memory space holding the actual integer. The integer is in the box that's referred to by the variable name. This is not true with objects. With objects, the box holds, in essence, a reference to the object in question. So you think of the box as being like a little pointer, and if you look in the book, you'll see object diagrams that show the actual pointers. So you think of it as being a pointer to the actual object in memory, and we'll see some examples of why that's different. These are reference types, so objects works differently. So if I do this and I think I'm done, I'm not really done, because I have set up the box in memory that has the reference to an object, but I have not yet created the actual object object. So that's not really complete. So what I need to do is use the keyword new. That says, hey, I want to create one of these things, one of these new objects from scratch. I want to create a new scanner object and I'm going to need to pass in whatever information it needs to set itself up. In this case, we're going to say, hey, scanner, I want you to be associated with system input. So that's a lot of information in one line. Create a new object and uh, instantiate a new scanner object would be a term for it. And we're calling this uh, scanner with system in. We're tying it to the input. And then we are setting that, assigning that uh, reference to the variable called con in, which stores references to scanner objects. So stop and think about that one, because that's a lot of information. <laughs> now, um, we'll talk more about reference types and objects, and this, you know, there's a lot to learn, but let's, let's move on, and, uh, and, and this works. Now, scanner, you can think of it as almost like an interpreter. You've hired this interpreter to go to the console and get user input for you. So one of the interesting things is um, we, we really only need one interpreter. If you think about it, we have this object that talks to the keyboard. We can keep talking to the keyboard at various times, and we'll, we'll talk about later some problems that students run into, and they start creating multiple scanner objects. They think every time they want to prompt the user for something, they create a new scanner object. Don't, don't think about it that way. This is the guy that's going to talk to the scanner. Now, what do we need to do to actually get the first user input? Well, we're going to first prompt the user, so we know how to do that. We're going to print a message that says, what is your name? Right? And then we need to uh, set up a variable to hold the username. And we need to set it equal to. Now, let's go find uh, let's go find the reference for scanner in the uh, helps in the API documentation, so we know what we're looking for here. You'll see that if you open the API and you scan way down and find the scanner object, then one of the things that we're going to be looking for with all of these provided objects is there's a lot of information down here about how all of it works and how you create one of these things. That's a constructor. We're going to talk a lot about that later. And then a bunch of method summaries. It has a million things that it can do. The things that we are looking for at the moment are things that get stuff in. So uh, the get stuff in is going to be all in this thing called next. So we're looking for next whatever it is that we're looking for. So now let's go back to our program and see what we need to do. In this case, uh, we need to find the next, we want the next string that's going to come in, right? In this case, we're looking for a string. So in the documentation, what is that? Well, there's a next integer, there's a next, you know, big integer, next boolean, next byte, next everything. In this case, we simply need to get a string. And so we can, we can just use this keyword called next. 
and next is going to give us uh, whatever is the next token that comes in from the scanner. A token in scanner terminology and in, in the scanner world is something that's separated by spaces. So you can have a scanner that can read a whole bunch of inputs that are separated by spaces and kind of parse them out for you. So in this case what we're going to do is we're going to use the scanner object that we've created and we're going to say, hey, would you please get us the next thing? Would you get us the next token, please? Because we think whatever the user typed is the next token, that's probably, that's their name, right? That's what they were supposed to type in. So we will leave that, and we're going to then, uh, just for a moment, let's prove to ourselves that this actually worked. So let's do a system.out. Remember, we want to develop, uh, develop sequentially, iteratively here. So we want to prove that we're actually able to print this thing. So let's print line or print whatever it doesn't really make any difference and let's print the uh, username and let me case it right so I won't get uh, messed up later okay so let's see that this compiles it has no syntax errors let's go and run the thing and let's see if it works so we'll go back here and we will tell the user box to run its main what is your name B-I-L-L -L enter and it echoes back bill so we successfully got the thing in question now there's a whole world of problems that can happen when the user doesn't input the thing that you want let us not worry about that for the moment let's assume the happy path and so now we understand the very basic stuff about how to use a scanner and how to use the scanner to get some information. Now, while I'm here, I don't want the video to get too long, but while I'm here, you should be able to see that these next questions are pretty straightforward. So if I say system.out.print, I can say specify box width, one to 100, all right, I can do stuff like this, and then certainly I can create an integer called box width and set it equal to what? All right, we use the scanner object, and what do we want to do with the scanner object? We want to say conin dot, and if you look at the help, you'll see you can get a next integer, right? That's what I want. We're going to do the same thing for the height, so you'll see that that's pretty straightforward to do. So I'll hit enter, paste that in, and then get this tabbed over. And now we should have a program. We can get rid of this guy. You should have a program that gets in those three pieces of information successfully. You can go then and prove to you to yourself that it works by simply you know printing them back out to yourself. So this compiles. This should work just fine. Um, and the user one by one can type these things and press enter. Now, interestingly, I want to show you that it won't look nice in the output, but I do want to show you one interesting thing that happens. Um, you can actually bypass all of these things by doing the following, right? Because it has a, is a token-based thing, I can actually say bill space 25 space 75, and when I hit enter, it's actually gone past all of this code and it's it's taken the next token and supplied it as answers even though we had a print line and then we said get the next thing it has this all buffered up right so it's interesting stuff and the scanner works maybe differently than you might expect uh, but it has some interesting benefits too so at this point I think we'll stop because that's enough video for this and this gives you the basic idea of how to use the scanner, how to set up the scanner object, how to tie it to system input, right? so you get console input, and then how to use it to retrieve next tokens which are sort of, you know, I don't know, whatever the user types, I'm going to take it in up to the space and then I'm going to uh, take that in as next. And then you can also use next int to get the next integer that's coming from uh, scanning, scanning that from the input and you could do the same thing to get doubles and other things like that as well. So you get the general idea how it works. Now one thing that I want to show you uh, that we will fix later is let's look at the, the case where the user types something we didn't expect them to. So what happens if I type, sorry again it looks bad, but what if I type uh, and by the way you can go options clear and clear this to make it easier. Uh, so I'm going to type instead of Bill I'm going to type Bill Barry and watch what happens right blow up exception you got a 
type mismatch exception. So what happened? Well, the first token it took in for name, but then that was up to the space. My last name, it was the next token, and it tried to say, hey, I want to get an integer, and there wasn't an integer there, so it says, hey, I can't get an integer, so I blow up. So we have a lot to learn. We won't learn it all in this chapter about how to deal with uh, problems with scanner input, but we'll leave that for just a moment. And uh, and the, the one thing that we will do to solve the problem temporarily is we're going to say, um, I'm going to say con in dot next line. And what that says is, if you've got other stuff buffered, if you've got a bunch of other junk that the user typed in, I don't really care. I want to go all the way to the time that the user pressed enter. So anything else that came in with that line that the user might have typed extra, I'm just going to discard it. I'm just going to grab it. And notice, I don't store it anywhere. So in essence, I'm just saying discard everything up to the next line feed, right, to the next enter. So that solves the problem, and if the user types a whole bunch of stuff on that line, it won't matter because we'll just take the first token that's up thing up to the first space. We'll bring it in. We'll start on the first name. We'll throw everything else away. So that solves our problem, um, and uh, and we'll we'll move forward with the rest of the demo. Um, but this gives you the setup for using Scanner. So I'll uh, see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed it.